As real estate investors, we all strive to make our portfolios as passive as possible. There are so many different areas that you can optimize to streamline your business. I've made every mistake under the sun. So today, I am going to share with you six of my favorite tips for being a successful landlord. Hi there, my name is Mindy Jensen and I'm the host of the Bigger Pockets Money podcast. Let's get into those six different hacks that you can implement today. Of course, you wouldn't be a landlord without protecting your property first. Securing insurance for your rental property shouldn't be complicated and time-consuming, especially for real estate investors who are trying to close on a property quickly. Traditional insurance companies often demand long lead times and tedious paper forms, creating a slow and manual experience. You need insurance that works like the other modern tools that you rely on. Enter Steadily.com, your solution for fast and affordable landlord insurance, available online 24-7 with just a few clicks. Say goodbye to the hassle of waiting and get next day coverage that takes only minutes to obtain, all from the convenience of your phone. Steadily is not just an insurance provider. They were founded by landlords who created insurance products tailored to the unique needs of this industry. It's their sole focus. And that's why landlords nationwide consistently rate them 4.8 out of 5 stars. Whether you're managing single-family properties, overseeing short-term rentals, or handling apartment buildings and beyond, Steadily.com can secure the best coverage at the best price for your real estate investments. Discover how Steadily can save you both time and money on your rental property insurance. Visit Steadily.com for a commitment-free quote tailored to your needs today. All right, now let's get back into those six tips. Number one, before you can even become a landlord, one of the most important things you need to do is price your rental properly. You might be thinking, is pricing my rental a little too high or a little too low really that big a deal? Yes, because not only could it impact your business, but it could also impact the kind of tenants that you get applying for your property. If you price your rental a little too low, you might be inundated with rental applications and you could choose the wrong tenant because you feel this obligation to screen everybody or you don't screen everybody because you're so excited about the amount of applicants you have. On the other hand, if you price your property too high, your tenant could leave you in a lurch because they discover that your rental is too expensive and they leave. You definitely do not want them vacating the premises early. The best way to make sure you're in the right range for pricing is to do your market research and pull comps or comparisons, which is what other properties nearby with similar amenities are going for. Make sure you're finding other similar property types. Even go so far as to go to a rental open house if they're hosting one, so you can get a look firsthand at the competition. Now, I'm not suggesting you schedule an actual one-on-one appointment, but if they're hosting an open house, that's a great time to get eyeballs on a property. You wanna find matches that are as close as possible to your property. Number of bedrooms, square feet, neighborhood type, and year built. Other things to keep in mind is if the rental is a turnkey unit and the area it's in. The proximity to schools, access to public transportation are also key things to identify. And on-site amenities like parking, laundry, and AC. You want to compare your property to other properties because that's what your tenants are doing. Number two is to make sure your property is being advertised the right way. Facebook Marketplace is kind of the new Craigslist when it comes to scammers who are out there stealing your rental information. Add watermarks to all of your pictures with your contact info on it, your email address or your phone number or something, so the scammer sees that and thinks, "Eh, I'm not even going to bother with this. I'm going to move on to the next listing that didn't take these precautions. Set up a Google Voice number and an email address specific to the property so that potential tenants don't have your personal number and they don't have your personal email. Another important step is to never actually publish the address on one of these websites, but instead give clues to where it's located, either by using major cross streets or saying something like, it is a half a mile from Trader Joe's to give people a general idea of where the property is located. Only after they pass your initial screening do you give them the address. Number three, screening your tenants. Outside of the standard screening process, for example, a rental application, a credit check, a background check, 
I always recommend meeting a tenant in person and walking the property with them. Make sure you're pointing out features of the unit that they may not notice. This avoids the call after the lease is signed where they're asking you, hey, where's the dishwasher? If your property doesn't have one. Another hack I have is walking your tenant to their car. While they may have seemed great in person, once you get to their car, if it looks like a pigsty and there's trash everywhere, that could be a good indication of how they're going to treat your property. You want somebody who treats your property with respect. Ask open-ended questions such as, how many animals do you have? Not, do you have animals? Because that tells the tenant, I already know you have animals animals, how many are there? As opposed to, do you have animals? Oh, no, I don't. When they could be trying to sneak in a pet into a pet-free rental. Number four, you need to treat this like a business. Crafting a solid lease is paramount for multiple reasons. First, it establishes clear expectations and responsibilities for both parties, reducing the likelihood of disputes and misunderstandings way, way, way down. A well-written lease protects your rights as a property owner and ensures compliance with local tenant laws and regulations. This can help safeguard your investment by outlining procedures for rent payments, property maintenance, and tenant conduct. There are lots of areas local landlord-tenant laws don't even cover, like pets, parking, smoking, or even painting the interior of the property. If you want your tenant to know about something, you need to put it in the lease. But caveat, you need to make sure that your lease complies with state and local landlord-tenant laws. And while you are protected with your steadily insurance policy, that does not cover your tenant or their possessions. So you want to make sure that your lease includes a tenant insurance policy clause. Ultimately, a good lease serves as a crucial tool for maintaining a positive landlord-tenant relationship and safeguarding your rental property. Of course, it goes without saying that your lease should be reviewed by an attorney. But hey, you're in luck. Bigger Pockets offers attorney-reviewed, state-specific leases for $99 per lease if you purchase them, or they're part of your pro membership as a perk if you have an annual pro membership. You can find these forms at biggerpockets.com slash LL forms, LL for landlord. All right, number five, tenant communication. To be a great landlord, you need to be there to respond to the tenant as needs arise, but you also need to be on top of communication to your tenant. As an example, if there's going to be someone coming to the property to perform maintenance, give your tenant a heads up. Let them know ahead of time that someone's coming. Or if you know there's going to be planned outages, like the water's being turned off because they're flushing the mains. This is great information to communicate with your tenant. It saves you so much frantic phone phone calls. Why is my water out? And the best way to communicate with your tenant is in writing. Number six, remember when I said this was a business? That means you need to run it as such. This means adapting to changes in the market. Don't insist that your tenants pay by check if there's a new, more streamlined process to pay online. And just because technology has come a long way, I still like to keep hard files of all signed leases at my house in my file cabinet so that I have a backup in case something happens to my computer. And keep records of everything, all communication with your tenant, requests for repairs, timelines for when the repairs were completed, etc. You want to keep great records because the better your records are, the less opportunity for there to be conflict. There you have it. I hope you learned a little bit about how you can be a more successful landlord today. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Mindy Jensen. If you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more helpful videos just like this. If you have any questions on how you can become a successful landlord, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.